you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension of not only a film and sound, but mind. A journey into an auditory movie review adventure that must be experienced to be believed. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop. The Doomsday Clock. Yeah! Which first is the Doomsday Clock? Week 91, 1 hour 30 minutes to doomsday. Uh, Babs, look, I, I don't want to concern you, but I've noticed a couple of things have changed. Look, for a start, where's my TV? To be blunt, the audio-visual unit you were using came from a timeline and dimension that has collapsed at a quantum level, rendering it null and void in terms of existence. Uh, what? All I want is my TV. Where is my TV? As I said, operational time in the dimensional continuum where the beings that created the TV has collapsed in on itself rendering all of their civilization including technology null and void, meaning it has ceased to be. Yeah, that's just complicated and hard. No. Um, why is the burn mark on the couch that used to be cat-shaped now shaped like some sort of lizard? Timelines across the entire continuum are collapsing and changing, meaning that random events that may have led to things such as evolution are ceasing to have happened, and what was once a cat stayed a prehistoric lizard. Okay, that makes no sense. Um, all right, so, who's to blame for all this shit? The destruction has a nexus that centers on court psyops. Uh, hang on, hang on. You're telling me court, like court psyops, the dude that's been here lots of times, like mad science dude, portals, like the big fucking portal behind the couch, that he's responsible for all this shit. Correct. All right, well, two things. One, get me an FAQ on time travel because I don't understand any of this shit. And two, get me court psyop. All right, court. Hey, what's here. Up, Witch? You, yeah. You've you've got some fucking explaining to do, buddy. I mean look, my TV's uh, gone, my, my 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 cat scorps is now apparently a crocodile fucking scorps, and time's busted. Oh, holy shit, this is all real. I thought we were just fucking around, man. Like No no really this, this is real here. shit. Yeah, you, f- you're here what in a pocket. F- fuck? Dude, I'm just some weirdo programmer guy that fucking does podcasting. I don't know shit about any of this. <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay, you, you know, you 2020 you is. No, but 2030 you and 2040 you, totally different. Okay, Uh, what I want you to do, go, ooh, I don't know, Rick Sanchez and ooh, some level of crazy OCD Nazi and that's 2040 you. 2030 you, uh, more Rick Sanchez. Okay, okay, hang hang on, hang hang on. All right, no. We made all this shit up. Like, you and I are just podcasters. This was just a fucking... <laughs> this was just a storyline we made up for, like, our shows to work together and just kind of, like, cross-promote, man. Like, this was all based on, like, a fucking podcast that was all just fake shit. I don't know that much fucking shit about science, and I can promise you I'm not going to become some kind of mad super scientist in, like, 20 fucking years. There's no way that could happen. Okay, so 2018, which, yeah, 100%. He was that guy. I'm the other one. The one that actually has to live this shit with you. Now, l- let me help you explain. Time is like a block of cheese, okay? It's full of stuff. Solid <coughs> works, okay? But every now and again, some fucking mad science dickhead drills a hole in it because they want to go from one side to the other. And that's fine when you do it once. And then you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. And all of a sudden, all you've got is a big hollow thing full of fucking holes and no cheese. You know what happens after that? Time collapses. And that's what I'm living right now. And everything says, you did it. But this was all just shit that we made up. And I know that you're actually supposed to be in the future, but no one expected Witch to live that long. How did this even fucking happen? Look, it's 
It's some quantum level bullshit about causality and chaos theory and every decision you make causes a new universe and blah bloody blah All I know is, is that according to Babs, who is also real, you invent time travel because your OCD drove you to the point of insanity where you wanted to go back in time and re-edit your old shows. Oh man, that would so be fucking worth it. Really? Really? Worth it. Remember, living in a pocket. Living in a fucking pocket. Earth, gone. Alright? I've been living in this fucking pocket for a year, and now I find out that the pocket is actually gonna fall apart, and I'm gonna disappear. Yeah, but like... And I'm not real happy about it. Yeah, but no, you don't have to disappear, man. A pocket is blocking out everything else that doesn't exist, right? Like, because it's the pocket, it's, it's protecting you. And like any fucking pocket, or a bag, right? You reach your hand into it, you can grab it and turn it inside out. There's... Yeah, that's... It, it sounds good. I like the serial toy theory... Right. But there's rules. And I'm pretty sure that if we turn it inside out, all of a sudden, I'm no longer me. I'm some other witch. And what about the other infinite number of witches? Because dimensions and time collapsing, compressing into itself. All right. I've read enough DC comic books to know that you got to break about 13 or 14 Earths to get your continuity back in order without punching a fucking crystal. You're not punching my crystal. I'm doing my time. <laughs> right, right. Okay. No, no. This, this, in theory, I don't know how to do it, but the, in theory, that this would work. So if this is what I'm going to end up causing in the future, I'm probably working on a way to fix it. And if that's the case, then I'm going to be in a fucking loop, and mm. I can make this all be on me in my head. I can do that. I can collapse everything and bring the pocket and just basically make my realities fractured until I'm me, like just the regular loser fucking podcaster. I can do this, man. If I'm going to do everything else, if that's what's going to happen, if I watch this unfolding, I know this now and I can fix it. All I have to do is just basically come back to the point where I decide I'm going to do the time travel and flip everything inside out. I can do that. Look, uh, I, I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I feel like we need to study it a little bit. And the best way to study it is to read the frequently asked questions. Oh, no, I got a Cliff's Notes version for you, man. We can do a movie version of that. It's, it's fine. I got that. <laughs> movie version. So you're telling me there's a movie version of the frequently asked questions about time travel. Yeah, and it's fucking British made, too. It's it's it, Trust me, it's like my favorite fucking time travel movie, and this will sort everything out and will answer all of the questions that we need to know in a very entertaining way that's way less dry than the 5,000-page manual. All right, so let's go to the movie. Whose round is it? <laughs> Got the last round. A funny thing happened on the way to the bar. And Cassie, well, I repair time leaks. Very clever, Ray. You want to hear what happened or not? Absolutely. You're a time traveler. Bingo. Yes. <laughs> Three friends ran out of time and into a whole new dimension. I will see your time traveling hottie and raise you a pop full of dead bodies. It's Doctor Who meets Shaun of the Dead. I think we found your time leak. It's in the gents. No, before they unravel the mystery. It's us. We can't bump into or speak to the other us. They'll have a few questions to answer. Don't go in! That is the end of the world. I'm not going out there. So at least out there, there might be someone who can help us. Like who? Like friendly future people with huge heads. <laughs> You can't kill anything in the past because it wipes out all its descendants in the future. Don't sleep with anyone. Always ends up being your mom or your grand. Oh, that's just sick. We're back. Freeze! I think we're going to have a little standoff here today. So what do we do now? What? This is your thing. This is not my thing. No, my thing is sitting on my arse, reading books about this shit, not actually being in it. Hi. I'm pointing a rather large gun at you. You didn't, like, mention its range? I'd hit you from here. Turns out everybody in the future... American. It's so funny you'll want to go back in time and see it again. I mean, how hard can it be to make a film that doesn't suck? Hooray! This is Cassie. She's my girlfriend. Have we had any of the, uh... Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Unless, of course, you mean sex. Yeah, we've done that last. Lot. Frequently asked questions about time travel. So, who's round is it? So, 
This is, in fact, 2009's Frequently Asked Questions about time travel. That is a runtime of 1 hour and 23 minutes, and according to IMDb, which still exists, it is what it is about while drinking at their local pub. Good start. Three social outcasts attempt to navigate a time travel conundrum. I now understand why you wanted to watch this movie, because it makes perfect sense. <laughs> All right, directed by Gareth Karavik, best known for this movie and a bunch of UK TV, including another comedy that I'm vaguely familiar with called Two Pints of Lager and a Packet of Crisps. That's too many S's, but not to worry. It stars Chris O'Dowd as Ray, best known for being Roy in the IT crowd. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Uh, yeah, all the time. Anna Farris, all the time, just punch it. Uh, Anna Faris as Cassie, best known for being Cindy in the Scary Movie series, one through four, and as the voice of Jeanette in the most recent animated Chipmunks movies. Never watched them, but apparently that's what IMDb said she was known for. Uh, Mark Wooten as Toby, best known for this movie and some episodes of Drunk History UK. And Dean Lennox Kelly as Pete, best known for this movie and a couple of episodes of the UK version of Being Human. Um, I like the UK version of Being Human. It was good. The US version? Yeah. Not so best much. version. The British version was the best version for sure. First impressions count. So straight away in this movie, um, the first thing I noticed was uh, hell is a room full of crying children without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, mine was, oh, awesome. A bunch of that guys I recognize from other British movies and TV. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I've seen him in the back of, and yeah, no, he was in, you remember that one with that guy, the thing? It was funny, I remember. Yeah, they were all these guys. Uh, But then again, I reckon like, British like BBC movies, uh, they're all full of just. Oh, you remember that guy? There, there's none of them that you go. No, nah, he is only known for this. Although um, Chris O'Dowd is probably best known for being in the IT crowd. Yeah, um, a lot of folks will probably recognize him now from the Get Carter uh, Netflix series. He's really fucking good in that. Oh, is he really? Okay, I must. Oh, I haven't seen that. I'll have to check that out at some point. Um, and speaking of things that I need to check out at some point, um, I have to say that I think the job of theme park character has to be the worst one on the planet, without a shadow of a doubt. Regardless, if you have to wear a cost, uh, a, look, a, a padded costume uh, with a head on it, yeah, your life is ruined. <laughs> ruined. My, yeah, as soon as I saw that theme park, my first thought was theme parks in Britain must not be that great because that looks like a depressing fucking place. Oh, well, even, like, and you look at it outside, like the weather's like gray and misty and shit. I'm going, dude, nothing about this says fun. <laughs> just like, oh no, I just don't ever want to be there. Um, on the reverse, I'd have to say that Ninja, Ninja Yodler would have to be an awesome porn parody. <laughs> Uh, as soon as I see as soon as I see her name in the credits I automatically think oh no not Anna Faris <laughs> there's nothing wrong with Anna Faris I beg to differ sir I beg to differ She's, she she has a very unique place in cinema <laughs> she's, she's just you know sure you know I, I, I have no wish want or need to ever see her naked which is unusual for me because well boobs um <laughs> and for those of you at home we're less than 10 minutes into the show and i've talked about boobs um <laughs> now i'm upset about it. you Anna Faris. uh what am i talking about oh that's right um you have to agree all great thinking is done at the pub <laughs> and I also think that Ray takes sci-fi and Imagineering a little too seriously. Yeah, can we talk about Imagineering just for a minute? Aren't Imagineers people that work for Disney? I believe they patented that word, and you can probably get sued for every time you say it. Yes. So come and get me, you big-eared motherfuckers. Um, yes. <laughs> Just imagine he's so wrong. Um, although, but I think they're drinking Guinness, which in itself, wrong. Guinness will give you the nastiest fucking hangover you will ever have in your life, without a shadow of a doubt. I can speak from experience. Um, 
Have you drunk Guinness Court ever? <laughs> My wife is Irish, so yes, quite a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so you know, you know what's in it, and it's evil. <laughs> it's evil. I think it's like 50% um, yeah. bog water, 50% chocolate syrup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 and then I think medical level alcohol stirred in for flavor. Um, <laughs> yep. Fucking, oh, that will do nasty things to you. And speaking of things that will do nasty things, time leaks are never good, hence where we are today. Um, the list yeah, of how. Enough, oh, sorry. I was going to. I got one. Uh, <laughs> no, go, 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 go. The Guinness did actually provide a list of how to improve Hollywood content that was definitely on point and probably will remain true to this day. Story is always king. Always has been. Yes, always story will be. always will be. Yep. Although I am curious to know what's wrong with Jude Law. <laughs> Other than the fact that he exists? or uh... Again, I quite like Jude Law. I think he's all right. He's weird. Um, possibly mechanical. Not 100% sure. But... Yeah, not that bad. Um, uh, now, speaking of other things that are on the list, killing Morrissey, I don't think that's an altogether bad idea. Yeah, I would love to be a time editor. I think that is my dream job. I would love to go back in time and just change things for the creative better. Mm, just go, you know what? This is as good as it ever gets for you. So, you know what? Finish what you're doing and then you're done. <laughs> All right. The, the opportunity to avoid dead on the toilet Elvis, I think is worth it. Actually, you know what? And Fat Val Kilmer. I think if we didn't have that Fat Val Kilmer, we did the world would be a better place too. Yeah, the list of people to be edited out of time, given by Pete and Toby, is definitely spot on, and I wholeheartedly agree with just Morrissey in general. Yeah, yeah, Morrissey, just fuck off, Morrissey. Um, and uh, on that note, no one reads the manual. No one. Well, look at us right now. Didn't read it too hard. Watched a movie instead. <laughs> Also, Anna's character dressing de- down Ray's char- the character of Ray, and just basically about how delaying his pub drinks to explain how it doesn't matter and it's not going to affect his time. This is probably yeah. the best acting work that Anna Ferris has ever done. The way she's so sarcastic, but plays it so dry and straight, that is incredible. Mm. Oh, look, I think the bits later on where she speaks with confidence uh, about uh, quantum entanglement are quite good. I almost <laughs> believed her. <laughs> Um, and on that note, I honestly believe that uh, Ray does give the best chat line ever, which is, I'm sure you'd look great naked. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong with saying that, but you definitely do not want to say it in the manner that he did because it got all creepy real fast. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. Not, not that you'd be bad at being a stripper. I'm sure you'd be great. You'd be great at being a stripper because I'm sure you look <laughs> great naked. Yeah, it's just like, oh my God. Yeah, you might as well just say, show us your boobs. Um, and again, folks, that's uh, less than 10 minutes again. And now, <laughs> while we're talking about things that are a little bit creepy, singing Bonnie Tyler songs while going into the gents. Uh, <laughs> a little weird, a little creepy. And I think it's going to make you friends and potentially not the friends that you want. Well, calling children nappy-wearing motherfuckers will definitely make them cry, and that's a good thing to know. Yes, because they are nappy-wearing shitbags. All of them. Little disease-carrying motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> I wish I could do that. Just like just start talking to kids and have a whole room for them just completely crap themselves. Like those kids. Like, he even <laughs> made a kid vomit, which I thought was great. <laughs> Yeah, they were super upset, and the parents were just kind of like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> it's just like, meh. Yeah, uh, and I like how his boss just walks in. Uh, all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, ruined it. Just ru- And yeah, no, you're done. You're yeah, out. <laughs> the whole stripping down of his armor and everything else is very funny. Very funny. Now, I think out of everything, the the biggest first impression I got from this, this movie was never touch anything in a pub toilet. Ever. <laughs> Avoid the gents in a pub uh, at all costs. Oh, God, yes. It's just ugh. pub, club. Anywhere where people are drinking alcohol, don't. Just don't. Um, on that same note, going for a slash outside yeah, only works in some circumstances. I've been, you know, <laughs> kicked out of a hotel for doing that more than once. But still. Internal time machines do not require manual- manuals so long as you're an American. Yes, yes, and I want to know where her recharge socket is. Hey, oh!
Tell me what you learned and keep it nice. First thing I learned was there are always rules to time travel. No one seems to agree on them, but there are always rules. Um, and as we've learned today, the most important one is apparently don't do it too much or you break the cheese. <laughs> the man who lost his job should not have to be buying for f- drinks for his friends. Yeah, I know. How does that work? <laughs> How does that work? I mean, look, I think we've, we've all been to the pub with uh, with those guys who go, yeah, but I got this. No, no, you remember that one time? Like, I gave you, like, a tenner. It's just like, dude, can you just go and buy a drink? Can you just fucking get around? Seriously. It's unreal. Uh, yeah, you know what? I believe that hiding in the cupboard should be the solution to everything. <laughs> when in doubt, hide in the cupboard. Yeah. Uh... I got some questions about that. I'm going to save that for later. <laughs> I, def- okay. I, de- I definitely know that time travel is not good for sex tourists. No, because you can potentially end up um, having sex with your grandma, which is a little gross. Um, and, you know, sure, potentially if you're living in uh, some sort of mountain area, it might be okay. Um, well, as long as, you, years- as long as you don't get her pregnant, it doesn't matter. It's fine. True, true, sure. Um, uh, but, you know, if you're not really interested in getting a pregnant, maybe go the other way and crack a cold one, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, see, you're the right person to have on for that joke. Uh, <laughs> speaking of kink shaming, don't kink shame anyone that likes to be stuck in cupboards with sweaty men. All right. Some people pay good money for that. Time traveling while at a pub is not always because one got blackout drunk, apparently. Yeah, see, <laughs> you know, is that time traveling? Is it really? I mean, it feels like it, sure, because you wake up and think, yeah, how did it get to Thursday? Um, <laughs> but it yeah, got to be the worst possible place to time travel, I reckon, in the pub. I mean, you know, you could you could go in at at at, uh, at opening, come back out, and it's closing time, which would really suck. Um, you know, and uh, see, it's a very British thing to call time in a pub. Uh, ringing the bell and going time please gentlemen um i i didn't fully understand how that worked but you know that would that would really suck go in take a slash come back closing time no drinks that would that would suck ass. um where was i now weapons and food always a good idea i think if you're gonna you know hunt monsters weapons and food always good and pete covered in shit is not good i'm not a nerd i'm an imagineer <laughs> See again, I would rather be called a nerd than an imagineer. That is the worst part. Imagineer. That is just it's scientific just wrong. fiction. <laughs> science, science fiction, scientific fiction, or what was the other one he said? Speculative, uh, speculative fiction. Speculative fiction. Yeah. Speculative fiction. Really, really. Now, speaking of fiction, um, Millie, the editor, she she was as convincing. In her acting as, I would say, a White House press secretary. Officially, she did an okay job, but unofficially, it was fucking terrible. Uh, uh, yeah, unofficially, it sucked. It was bad. And I, I, I went, I'm sure they just went, you know what? We need two American women. Can can anyone, 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 just please come and, and join us. Um, they needed of, uh, someone to make Anna be... Ferris look good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it, it was a bit like they went, can we find a budget Anna Ferris? <laughs> That's hurtful. That's hurtful, but honest. <laughs> yes, we, we need a Costco Anna Faris. An no, there's Anna no, Faris. there's there's no Kirkland signature Anna Faris. Anna Faris is the Kirkland signature. <laughs> so that must mean that Millie was the Walmart Kirkland. I don't even know what the, the great, Walmart brand is. <laughs> the great value brand of wine. Yes, Come, comes in a box. <laughs> with a hose tap on the end not not a nozzle a hose tap just psh, straight out uh, now just spare a thought for the old guy that wanted to go for a slash he needed to go twice and got cut off <laughs> he's going to be practically wetting himself that poor old bastard while pete doesn't want to talk about it he also can't stop talking about it oh pete see uh, near death pete just very chatty very chatty um and still covered in shit um now i don't know about you but i think if you uh travel into a uh, into a wasteland post uh, going through a toilet just fucking leave right don't go outside and play in green puddles just fucking leave <laughs> it is rare to find a girl who is into science fiction that also does not have everything pierced and what is wrong with everything being pierced I don't know. Ray seems like he's a bit too conservative for my taste. 
he's you know i mean sure there you know you've got i think you've got to draw the line at any woman that that has a face tattooed on over jj uh because that's a little creepy uh but yeah piercings to each his own gives you something to hang off i reckon um probably saying more about myself than anything else <laughs> <laughs> and it is true time travel adds 20 pounds just look at me if you sleep with a time traveling prostitute they will shag you into the middle of next week oh see i'd pay good money for that because i'm looking forward to next week um although do you have to pay extra because <laughs> she's been there for a whole week see you got to think about stuff like that right see <laughs> yes <laughs> And, oh, I see a week's worth of sex funk. That's not good. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Now I feel weird and creepy. At a certain uh, point, it's just going to be chafing and painful. Yeah, yeah. Never go in raw. Never. Go. <laughs> Although if she's a time traveling prostitute, she probably remembers after the sex to br- to bring lubricant before the sex. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Space dun. time fabric has the best sense of humor by placing time leaks in toilets. Mm. and that would mean that of course you need a space-time plumber to fix your <laughs> toilet leak uh the bartender who asks pete if those two are dead was actually my favorite background zed and Shaun of the dead yes yes he was he's he his whole career is background in uk everything again like i said there's a whole bunch of that guy folks awesome yes. How would you like to try something a little different? Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Uh, necrophilia. Uh, uh, uh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything yeah, that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. I'm sure you've got questions. Ask me anything. <laughs> what, what, what is a snug? And why does it only have a half-sized door? Is it for hobbits? Is, 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 that, is that what the snug's for? Is it for, for hobbits? Uh, officially, snugs are smaller room bar areas where you can serve to where everybody just sits and is more chill and less party atmosphere. And the door, I have no fucking clue. It's for Hobbit and Gum, but I don't know. It just seems difficult. Um, and look, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure everyone has met a crazy person from the future, or that at least claims they're from the future. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Those people that say the end is nigh, they know. They know. Uh,. Now, let me ask you a question, seeing as you are working on a time machine at the moment. Um, can you get a time machine that works on karaoke and urine? I mean, why would you want it to? Why is Pete's well, time travel powered by karaoke and urine? I don't know, but apparently it is hands-free too. <laughs> Pete goes goes full on just uh, knob out, swinging in the wind, singing. Which I, I thought, you know, if you can get away with it, why not? Um 
And yeah, I mean, do, does that mean if you sing too many death metal songs, you end up in the past in like medieval times or something? I don't know. I, I want to know what the song list works like. What I want to know yeah, is why they, does Ninja Yodeler not actually exist? I know, right? That's what I'm saying. Anna Ferris as the Ninja Yodeler in porn. Okay, you lost me until you said the final two words, and now I'm kind of interested in that. Yeah, see? Right? Just magic, you know, appears, ninja style, yodels on your knob. Um, Pay good money to see that. That's all I'm saying. Pay good money to experience that. True, true. Have done. Um, Now, I don't know about you, but I know I have... uh, at some point in time, I think we all uh, reach uh, a place where we're worshipped as gods. I mean, sure, they were all drunk and high and midgets, but I was worshipped as a god. And although they didn't put my picture up on a wall, which I was a little sad about now, having seen the one they did of Pete and Ray and Toby. Who actually came up with this amazing idea that made them gods and famous anyway? Well, see, there was a seed planted and then it was watered. But of course, without the seed, you just got mud. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I, and it seemed, it made me think. It made me think: was what they wrote actually what was in the suitcase in Pulp Fiction? Think about that for a second. Is this a lost Douglas Adams story? It sure feels like one. Oh, it could be. It could be. Yes. See, um, all they need is a well. Do they need a miserable robot? They've got Pete. Um, and oh, see, I'm thinking about. But that does raise the question. Would you fuck somebody that was dressed as you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm repulsed God. by me. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to look like you. Just dressed as you. That's all I'm saying. Oh. Right, oh, uh, wearing, the same, yeah. wearing the same outfit as me? Yeah, sure, why not? I've yeah, been col- in a cult. So, yeah, see? Sandals, robes, paper dresses. It's great. Because uh, Toby, Toby was all up for that. He was wearing the just which I thought... Yeah, it brings new money to go fuck yourself. And, and well, with friends think, like Toby and Pete, who needs enemies anyway? Well, that's it, because Pete had lost it. Toby Toby was the ultimate, I've uh, not wearing the right shoes. <laughs> the margins are too wide. <laughs> Just got an excuse for everything. A bit of a wanker. And speaking of being a bit of a wanker, is soaking up a bit of the love like sleeping in the wet spot? And it's still bugging me. Why is it a problem if a girl who is into science fiction also has everything pierced? Why is that a problem? I just... Why? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. There's nothing weirdly wrong about, you know, angry Klingon sex with a girl whose clitoris jingles. Ching, ching. Or is that... Ching, ching. It's a good day to Bukaki. Um, That's wrong. I should be ashamed of myself, but I'm not. What horrible thing happened to cause everyone from the future to become American? Oh, I'd see. I wondered about that. And then I went, I blame TikTok and YouTube. That's what it was. TikTok and YouTube caused the downfall of language. You brought this up and now I can't stop thinking about it. What did go through that poor old man's head who kept bumping into the boys on their way to the toilet? Like he had to pee and he he kept getting scared off. What was going through his poor head? Uh, See, I was thinking, I reckon he was going to, was he brave enough to go to the ladies? Did he dare go to the ladies? Maybe he did, and he went so far to the future that he disappeared. And that how, poor, poor old man. How did Anna Fern- Ferris learn how to act just for this movie and then immediately forget it? Uh, because they told her to read her lines with confidence. <laughs> Last question I have. Wait, what? Pete hates sci-fi, but he loves Narnia. Yeah, I think secretly Pete's got a fetish for little people. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Well, hey, the dwarf fisting is a whole fabulous genre. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind, but it did. Moving on. Your time is almost up, so give me your final 
thoughts. The only time I think Anna Faris actually acts like Anna Faris is the bit where she's twitching, trying to, trying to get a system to work. <laughs> yeah, that's very scream, okay. uh, or not scream, yes. but a scary movie of hers. It's a it? movie. Yes, it is very scary movie. Yeah. Um, and does that mean that she's uh, actually suffering from Tempus Interruptus? <laughs> I did learning. I used real words. Um, and it, it, look, this movie does suffer from the age-old trope of shiny silver outfit means future person. Yeah. Thanks, Millie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Walmart Anna Faris. Um, <laughs> great value, Anna Faris. <laughs> great value, Anna Faris. Now with extra teeth. Um, I can't believe. Oh, that's what it was. Yes. I didn't think that Land of Make Believe was that bad a song. You know. When you're drunk enough. <laughs> Pete is an insecure bully who has to make fun of his friends to feel more superior and hide his own self-loathing. Yes. Well, look, he works in a theme park dressed as a dinosaur. <laughs> you know, there, there, there's not too many people on the food chain that are below that, I reckon. Maybe Toby. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, now, you should never, and I repeat, never spill another man's pint. I think that's just an unwritten rule. Not even if it saves his life. No, no, it's just wrong. Well, if you do, and it saves his life, I think the least you can do is buy him a new one without arguing. Ray will allow his curiosity to get the better of him, but is brave enough to somehow figure it all out. Yeah, Ray. See, ultimately, we learned that Ray really just wanted to, well, get his end away with Anna Faris. And, eh, you know, half an opportunity. Now, I, I did want to draw a line on the sand here to say that parallel universes are totally different to time travel in science fiction. All right? Totally different. That's more speculative fiction than actual science fiction. Also, paradoxes self-correct in a much more messily way in my experience. Yes, they, they, they very rarely run backwards. There's more exploding, from what I understand, in uh, Paradox Resolution. Um, lots of bits dropping off. But more fun, really. And more fun. And I think the, the key final thought for this is, this has to be the only time that spilling a beer actually resulted in a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I do have to say weapons and food is what we need is basically the best survival advice one can give in any situation. Yes. I want a bumper sticker that says weapons and food is what we need. <laughs> Just randomly. You know, you know what, Karen, if you want to go out and get a haircut, that's great. Weapons and food is actually what we really need. Toby's self doubt is crippling, but is probably the direct result of being Pete's friend. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> Because Pete's a bit of a dick. And, 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 yeah, I don't know. Poor Toby. Poor Toby. Stop being Pete's friend. Punch him in the dick. Casey seems to fail upwardly in her time leak repair work. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, the fact that she gets promoted twice and still hasn't solved the problem says that the time correction agency is run by the government. Hiding in a broom closet is the least heroic way to avoid a time paradox. Yes, yes it is. But again, don't kink shame people that enjoy being stuck in covers with sweaty men. Pete's propensity for panicking set off all of the horror his character actually endures. It's his own damn fault. Yes, panicky Pete in the forest for two months apparently, coming back covered in shit. Yeah, I think Pete needed to learn a lesson and that was... Yeah, fuck it. Suffer, Pete. I don't care. You're a horrible turd. Um, but he didn't die. So I reckon if Pete had lost a limb, that would have really, that would have clinched it for me. Well, he got his own, like, he got his own advice followed to the T. Weapons and food is what we need. That's what he kept focusing on. Weapons and food. Mm, weapons and food. But do you think that Pete was like that because he had PTSD from seeing his own corpse? Possibly, but I think he's just such a knob he wouldn't admit when he was wrong and he just kept darting off. Yeah, true, true, fuck it. So we've learnt, fuck Pete, Roy just wants to get, Ray just wants to get his end away and Toby needs to just shake it off, tell Pete to suck a dick and move on. Okay, great. Also, also he wants to go fuck himself, Toby does. <laughs> or at least someone dressed yes, like Yes, to Toby, to Toby's totally, he wanted, a th he wanted a threesome with himself. Well, look at this. <laughs> okay, now that I can uh, see getting into. Yeah, you know. That, that is the ultimate in narcissism, I reckon. But still, worth a shot. I'd pay money to see it. Um, so <laughs> that's rounded this out quite well. Now, do you think 2020 court, you've got it in your head exactly what we're up against now? 
Yeah. From what I've learned so far, it's possible to deliver a callback to every moment of overlapping paradoxes in time travel movies properly without abusing split screens. I'm looking at you, Back to the Future 2. Yes, although it's Back to the Future 2 and I kind of love it. Um, you know, if you want to talk about paradoxes, we could always talk about uh, Predestination. That's a movie that'll hurt your brain. Um, anyway, moving on from that. Uh, great Scott. So what do we do next? All right, so I'm not saying officially that I'm going to figure out time travel, but if this is all real and this isn't just some weird flashback hallucination from when I got dosed in high school against my will, cool. I'll find a way to repair it for you, and I will get back to you on this if this is actually going to happen and is going to exist. Well, it can, has, possibly will have happened and may will again possibly potentially happen at a quantum level. Did that sound confident? Because that's all I had. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the normal stuff I talk about, which is boobs. Yeah, I think you're more qualified for that. You have been listening to Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock, a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Come join the rest of the Meat Popsicles in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash witch versus the Doomsday Clock. 